With blood and rage of crimson red, ripped from a corpse so freshly dead, together with our hellish hate, we'll burn you all. That is your fate. This is Red Lantern Russell from Tomes of Evil. And you're listening to Sector 2814, a Green Lantern podcast. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrott, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest nights. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. I am Phil. Joining me as always, master of the core, it is. Hey, I'm Will, everyone. And master of the practical joke. Oh, we'll get there, man. He's getting shipped out. Uh, it is. What about master of the haircut? I got <gasps> my. That's notice. right. I have long hair. It looks like a Ragnarok. Dude, someone, somebody, people at work are like, what did you do? And I'm like, oh, I trimmed my mustache. They're like, oh, okay, I thought something was <laughs> Bro, my hair was like to my shoulders. I mean, sometimes my computer slips. You can't always see it in the shot, I guess. But, you know. <laughs> You don't have to check that hair at the airport. Yeah. Oh my lord, you look. That's right. You look like a uh, Chris Hemsworth from Thor Ragnarok. Come on. <laughs> well, it's my friend yeah. from work. Before, before and after. <laughs> oh well, I I I was Thor from uh, Endgame prior to this. But, you know. He's a friend from work. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah. All right, let's get into this. Oh, hey, I wanted to show uh, you guys this, especially you, Will. A uh, couple, couple uh, months back, I got a, like a set of like Justice League socks, but they're too warm. I wasn't gonna wear them in the warmer weather and have my feet sweat. But it was like they were like in the, in the bargain bin at Walmart. And one thing it was like six bucks for like what was it like five or six pair of socks? Guess who's in? Guess who's in the pack? <laughs> Our buddy Hal. Yay! That's right. And Batman, Superman, nice. Flash, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, I think Cyborg. Yeah. Uh, and I was showing you earlier, I've been uh, trying to pick up... Uh, no Guy Gardner? No! No Guy the ulti- The ultimate Justice Leaguer? Oh, wow. One bunch, man. One bunch. I picked up uh, Green Lantern, a celebration of 75 years, which is a pretty cool hardcover. It's got lots of reprints lots of good stories in it and then i picked up i'm not going to read it yet because i need to read after war of the green lanterns through this so i got to catch up but uh green lantern lights out which is uh i've heard lots of good things about uh robert uh, uh venditti yeah, on, yeah, on yeah green lantern yeah he had a decent run i'm looking forward to getting to those eventually and before you know, we get to them uh you know which is going to be much longer yeah <laughs> Yeah. And, you, and you know what else you have to look forward to soon? Green Lantern. Number eight. It Number will be here soon. Yes. <laughs> Closing in on the end of the month. I'm hoping that uh, some of these start working again. You know, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good. You get some John Stewart and then you get a bunch of like the lanterns whose wings don't work. They're like on Oa, like trying to get to the weapons and like the United Planets are like, no, 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 no. You can't be going running amok and Joe has to settle everyone down. She's been pretty good at that so far. They're like, why? Who put I'm you really... in charge? She's like, I'm the only one with the working ring. What do you think? <laughs> this, the Guardians put me in charge, so zip it. <laughs> and it seems like there may be a conspiracy, uh, you know, that that, uh, that whole exploding battery and everything. I won't spoil who might who may be behind that, but... Ah, okay. I do. Oh, um, it wasn't Sinestro or else he would have carved his name on that planet. That's right. But speaking of Sinestro, uh, there was a good, uh, 
short, like uh, 15 minute video uh, that was posted on Re- the Green Lantern Reddit. I think mm-hmm. it was the Green Lantern Reddit where uh, uh, he talks about Sinestro's motivations and why he is. And it was a really deep dive into his psyche and why he thinks the way he thinks and does what he does. And it was really interesting. Um, I'll, I'll send you guys the link later, but uh, it was it was really cool. I'm assuming it's more than he because he's a douche. <laughs> It is. It explains why he is. <laughs> but no, it gets into the fact that, uh, he, you know, he may be the master of fear, but he's afraid ultimately of, uh, you know, letting people in. Anytime he lets his guard down and trusts or, you know, does something, something bad happens. Mm-hmm. You know, he lost uh, Corger, he lost his wife, his child, uh, and he lost the whole, pl- yeah, he lost the whole planet. I mean, it's, it's, you know, he tries something and it goes wrong and then he reverts back and just doubles down on what he was doing before. It was, it's a really interesting kind of character study of him. That, and, and that damn Jordan. Damn Jordan, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, your love-hate relationship there. Die yeah. Jordan. Of course, of course. Die for somehow, Jordan. <laughs> there, so the back seats can hear it. Uh, oh. <laughs> I was going to ask what everyone was watching and reading. Oh, hey, Will, did you see the, uh, or even Matt, did you see the premiere of uh, Star Trek Discovery last week? No, but I, uh, it's a Paramount Plus thing. Yeah. 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 No, I, I'll, I'll probably check it out. Season four. The name of the episode was Kobayashi Maru. It was a very good episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All that future tech. All that future tech, yeah. Oh, but you know what's you know what starts tomorrow? Is that Hawkeye? First two episodes. No. Yeah, first if two. A Hawkeye, tomorrow, awesome. Yep, first two. So you know that's probably gonna you could do good numbers this weekend. Yep. That's uh and then Foundation ended. That's been a good series too. Oh yeah. Kind of a slow build, but the the it's be, it's beautiful. I mean, the design work, everything. It's it's a really pretty show, and I'm, I need to go back and watch it again. I think to catch some things that were there because it jumped around a little bit, you know, from quote unquote when it started to 34 years in the future to 120 years in the future from where they started, and it eh, probably need to reread the books too because it's been you know, uh, a little bit since I read the original trilogy and I've never read the prequel trilogy either. Probably should do that. And I was going to say, Hey Matt, how, how, how long is the trip to the far sector, man? You're probably gonna be watching what the next, the last six months of TV. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, no, I'm not watching that much TV. <laughs> you have to make a list. Be like, what if, uh, what if oh, yeah. Black Widow, Shang Chi? I still haven't seen Shang Chi. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think they. Uh, I've, I've I've heard some pretty good reviews of Hawkeye. Um, early reviews, you know. Obviously, not everybody's seen it, so yeah. because it doesn't come out till tomorrow. But I've, and I think I hope that's because they're sticking close to the, you know, the fraction yeah. uh, David Aja stuff which was, you know, an amazing run. I think so, because it looks like they have, like, Pizza Dog. It, those guys look like Tracksuit Mafia and stuff, so I'm assuming, yeah, they're going to mm-hmm. stay close to that. Yeah, because I think he's getting that. They said uh, Jeremy Renner's going to be wearing that suit. Ah, uh, cool. Very maybe, cool. Maybe it'll bring us two Young Avengers, because, yes, Kate Bishop's in it. Huh, I wonder, Young Avengers? No, they wouldn't be doing something like that, would they? I mean, they've only introduced... In the in the words of Deadpool, someone who can carry the franchise for at least ten years. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good old Deadpool. Well, I mean, we can you know Wanda Vision. We kind of saw the, you know Wanda's kids, and so uh-huh. they're building up. And we've seen a certain time traveling um, tyrant. Oh yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get a young uh, yes. <laughs> Iron Lad. Yes. <laughs> And uh, oh, what's his face? I um, was who was that? I is that Isaiah Bradley's grandson in Falcon and Winter Soldier? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, I wonder if they're gonna do it. <laughs> uh, Probably. Let's see anything else new in the worlds of entertainment? 
Um, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, <clears throat> the new isn't the new Ghostbusters out? Oh yeah, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I think we might go this weekend sometime. Cool. Let let me know because I mean we're we're still shying away from oh, well, yeah. we're in the south. We're still shying away from you know. Yeah. the cinema experience <laughs> yeah luke and i.e I, being around lots of people yeah luke and i were talking about going i mean we're off into we're both off till next tuesday so maybe if, even if we go monday morning maybe there'll be nobody there <laughs> <sighs> um I'm trying to think anything else new no i just can't wait for hawkeye uh, i think that's gonna uh, is that tomorrow yeah first two episodes mm-hmm. yep nice very nice. Put them up for your trip. To yeah, the I'm far looking sector. forward to that. Oh yeah, yeah, far sector. <laughs> That's right, kids. Matt Kona uh, gets to meet the the Owen disciplinarian board uh, soon here. <laughs> I don't know what he did, but pants the guardian or something. Please, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, Ganthet was not happy. <laughs> I finally wear pants for the first time in like a million years, and then you pull them down in front of the whole core. There you. All right. Uh, all right. Should we get to these issues? Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, so I believe there is a certain order to these, because uh, tonight we're doing Dark Stars twenty nine and thirty, and I believe Green Lantern sixty one uh, slides right in the middle. Yeah, I think it goes Dark Stars 29, Green Lantern 61, and then Dark Stars 30. Yep. All right, so begins with Dark Stars, number 29, March 1995. Uh, and look at this title. Uh, sounds like something Kona would write. Blood, Sweat, and Fears. <laughs> uh, writer, Michael Jan Friedman, penciler, Mike Collins, inker, Ken Branch, colorist, Linda Medley, letterer, Bob... Pinaha and editor Paul Kupperberg. Uh, now, before we get started on this one, uh, Dark Stars ended at number 38. Is that right? I believe so, yes. Okay, so there's just like eight issues yeah, left like after we, we read these two. Yeah, there's not too many left, so. Yeah, it kind of feels like it's coming to an end. Did you do you get that feeling, or is it just because we know it? Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know because it seems like yeah, we're kind of pushing a lot of those other uh, dark stars out the door. You know, we're focusing on Donna. It seems like we're getting some John Stewart, but yep. that Colin Ferris man, he's still hanging in there, some somewhere still far kicking. far away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what was that? Was that just like? I don't know. It's like we don't want to sweep everything away from the you know earlier issues, or did someone have a I don't know. soft spot? It feels spot? like they're making him a. It feels like they're making him a special dark star because yeah. the rest of the dark stars are pretty much interchangeable, but he's going to have a super super suit from a different universe. So <laughs> he's going to be a special dark star. <laughs> And as we'll get to in this issue, it's like, you know, if, if we get rid of Colin Ferris, it's like, yeah, we're getting rid of all the, that would be getting rid of all the old dark stars that basically Donna and John yeah, that, that, that have been on the title for, you know, three years, basically, almost, mm-hmm. <laughs> or two and a half. All right. So this one, yes, cause, because kids, <clears throat> Carla White quits the dark stars to become a lawyer again. Mo Douglas is asked by John Stewart to help protect a group of alien refugees. Donna Troy seeks comfort from Cal Rayner after losing custody of her son. And that was the issue. And that was the issue. <laughs> oh, yeah. They even mentioned Colin Ferris in that uh, summary. Yeah. He was basically taken prisoner and wherever he's at. and But then he gets freed by what? These uh, alternate dark stars. By the rebels. Yeah. Rebel scum. <laughs> Who's fighting his evil tyrant doppelganger. Yeah. Mirror universe, mirror universe. Sorry, <laughs> but does it seem like too? I mean, except for the Colin Ferris stuff, does and like you know the little bits we get of John Stewart. I mean, we're focusing heavily on Donna, and we're kind of bringing the Dark Stars a lot, a lot of it back to Earth. It seems you know, yeah, because we've kind of brought Green Lantern back to Earth and focused on totally. Earth, and yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think they're like, oh, people aren't buying the, the like the way out there cosmic stuff? So we need to inject some more Earth into this. 
who knows at this point? I mean, especially if Green it, Lantern's selling at this point, you know, if the sales are up, maybe they're like, oh, maybe that we need to do something like that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, hard to say. And maybe that's why we're. Uh, and it's like, oh, hey, hey, let's get Donna to date Cal. You know, so we can get Cal Rayner, <laughs> get Cal Rayner in this book. They're both they're together in Titan, the Titans book. So, yeah, that that doesn't last yeah. too long, does it? I believe it doesn't last till like uh, 80s. Oh, so it does. So it's I like think. a yeah, yeah. couple years worth. Okay. Yeah, I'd say probably at least two years. Yeah. And then she's abruptly gone. And then she's abruptly gone. <laughs> this is like a relaunch of Titans or something, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, again, we just get John Stewart doing like clerical work, basically, just like helping the, you know. Mm hmm. It's like, oh, hey, what do you need me for? You know, I've, I have Green Lantern experience. I have Guardian experience. Uh, yeah, we need you to uh, hire I'll point some dark stars to help people. Yeah, we, hire some help. Yeah. <laughs> we need you hiring people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you do the interviews thing? <laughs> Which is there? John Stewart, dark star HR. <laughs> And is there even like a central like command at this point? Because I mean, we really don't see anybody besides these dark stars. No, I mean uh, the controller, you know, made you know basically went and grabbed John, you know, after he woke up, you know, and his yeah. ring was gone or, or something. But uh, <laughs> we haven't really seen the controllers at all after that. Mm -mm. You oh, I was going to say, you think they're running for their lives from Hal Jordan? <laughs> no, because he's hitchhiking through Texas. <laughs> do Sorry. They know that? Do they Spoilers. Know that? Do they know that, though? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, again, yeah, it's just a lot, this issue, a lot of, well, again, we see those two green lanterns, those green lanterns, those two dark stars quit, we see Colin Ferris, like, fighting, what is that, like an alternate universe? Yeah, it's a, yeah, parallel universe, or the next number up on the dial, I don't know what it is. <laughs> the mirror universe, you know, it was like a transport. Yeah. It, was, it literally was almost like a transporter accident, so. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then a lot of just dawned, like, oh, I'm going to lose custody of my son. Oh, Kyle. Help us. <laughs> Cow, help us boost numbers on this book. Hey, and let's fly to Mars. <laughs> so, was everyone trying to boost their numbers with Kyle Rayner? Because, I mean, last issue of Green Lantern, he was crossed over with Guy Gardner. This issue, the next issue, he's crossing over with Dark Stars. You know, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I don't... I don't know if it was him helping them out, them helping him out, or just trying to get him everywhere to, you know, he's the Green Lantern now, we're going to just... Yeah showcase him in every book in you know the dc universe at this point i would assume he's helping them because i mean he's it's the new guy so everyone's curious he's the brand mm -hmm. name so yeah you're probably right hey come on kids come I mean, on tom stewart's over here come on so dark stars and guy gardner launched the same month but Guy Gardner la lasted what till forty two, forty six. Um, okay, let me look. I Between think four and six months, four and eight months longer than Dark Stars, right? Something like that. Yeah. Here, give me a second. I can look it up on my DC Finite. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah. Once again, Guy Gardner was a Green Lantern. Everyone knew him from Justice League and stuff. So. Yeah. Uh, Guy Gardner went to 44. 44. So six, six issues more than Dark Star. Plus, plus, an, plus an annual. I don't think the Dark Star's ever got an annual. I think you're right. <laughs> At least if they did. It's on my app. Okay, Matt Kona, what did you think of this issue? <laughs> um, Dark Stars to me is... Uh... It's a blur. I mean, custody <laughs> issues, courtroom <laughs> battles. Everyone's wearing the same suit. I don't know any of these characters. Like you said, the chain of command is uh, mysterious and out of control. So it's, uh, it's incomplete for me. I don't know. Drama, custody, so, 
drama, custody yeah. battles. What is this? Lifetime? Yeah. I mean, this was a, a very 90s uh, movie trope, you know. Like, this is, uh, it kind of fits in at the time period. Probably some spandex. Right? And again, it's like, if this is your first issue with Dark Stars, is this really hooking your interest? Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I agree. It's basically personnel changes. I mean, you get a little action with Colin Ferris, but besides that, it's like... Mm-hmm. It's really just talking and... Unless they were... Again, they're unless they're banking on the, hey, you know, this is going to cross over to the next issue of Green Lantern, so maybe you want to pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And it's a weird jump at least when I was reading it into the Green Lantern issue, it's like, hey, they're in Kyle's apartment. Hey, they're flying through the air and she's shooting at him. What? Huh? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, come on. (laughs) Gotta get some action. I I don't know. (sighs) So any other thoughts on this or should we get to the Green Lantern issue? Rock on, man. uh, Back a lunch. uh, (laughs) A picnic lunch to go to Mars? Yeah, lay lay out the the blanket to Mars, Mars, Mars. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so yeah, like we said at the end of the Dark Stars, uh, Donna goes to Kyle and it's like, Oh, they're gonna take my son away. So then we open up uh, Green Lantern 61, April 95, Picnic. <laughs> These titles, not subtle. Uh, writer Ron Mars, penciler Andy Smith, inker Romeo Tangle, colorist Steve Matson, letterer Albert de Guzman, and editor Kevin Dooley. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to have to discuss what we were discussing offline, Will, about this issue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cal and Donna take a picnic on Mars while being watched by Darkseid. He is interested in this last of the Green Lantern Corps and sends Calabac to confront him and see if he will be a threat. Calabac and his dog soldiers are defeated by Cal and Donna. Meanwhile, in the middle of nowhere, Texas, Hal Jordan hitches a ride. <laughs> I of course love Hal Jordan. Parallax. You mean Parallax? No. Oh. <laughs> Driving Hal. <laughs> hey, we don't right. know that yet. Retcon, we don't know that yet. I know. It's technically not. A, well, it's a retcon, though. So I'm incorporating it into the continuity now. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, we can focus on Calabac and the dog soldiers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So. Matt, me and Will were talking. We were saying, you know, mem- do you remember uh, Quasar Fifty Nine, that fill-in issue with uh, Star Fox and Thanos? Yeah, the only non yeah. Rune World condition. written by Ron Mars, art yeah. by Andy Smith. Yeah, I was gonna say, does this issue remind you of that at all? It's written by the same guy. It's drawn by the same guys. There's some uh, similar plot elements, you know, a battle on the planet, uh, Dark Side instead of Thanos. It is somewhat similar. Yes, I would agree with that. Or Calabac <laughs> instead of Thanos. I don't know. And you said you saw similar poses, as well, right? Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, the art wasn't bad. It just, you know, it's it, well, it wasn't Daryl Banks. Yeah, it's not Daryl Banks. Daryl Banks is he's pretty freaking awesome. Oh yeah. So I wonder if he was busy or if they were, you know. Maybe they were setting. Maybe they're like giving him time to do the next three issues. Or yeah, who knows? Because <laughs> about... because I mean, but you know, honestly, you know, you make a good point. This does kind of feel like a fill in, right? Maybe. Do you think? Oh, I wonder if they. Do you think they hit him with the with this at the last second? They're like, oh hey, Ron, can you write like a fill in to like crossover with Dark Stars? It's like oh, okay. Potential. I mean, who knows? Uh, I mean, it's because it doesn't really move kind of Green Lantern along with much. I mean, this this could happen pretty much, you know, at any time, except it has to happen right after Dark Stars 29, <laughs> you know, except for that. Yeah. Uh, but it does it does have that kind of um, unhooked from continuity kind of aspect to it. It's just kind of this story that happens there, right? And well, those last few pages gave us continuity. <laughs> that's true. We did get some continuity. Uh, next issue, we get, you know, Gantt's tail. <laughs> Again? Again? I thought we already went over that one. <laughs> but the title's Picnic? I mean, I thought they... It would have been better if they went with that... Uh, what's on the cover? To Hell and Calabac? <laughs> that was a good uh, plan, Words. <laughs> and do you, do you think that uh, 
Green Lantern's uh, lady friend ain't no Calabac girl. <laughs> I need you to send at least one of those in a week when you're in the far sector, okay? I'm gonna, I, I could try to send some transmissions. Okay. I gotta make sure to power my ring. Of course. Yeah. yeah, take a battery, man. Take a battery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, that cover gets a Matt Kona seal of approval for the play on words. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's, you know, and the there just didn't seem there doesn't seem to be a lot of meat to this. You know, it's the pages, you know, the panels per page seem to be pretty low, and it just doesn't seem like a lot of story, which kind of I think also lends itself to feel feeling like a you know a fill in issue. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, yeah, they asked that. I don't know if this was a last minute thing or they just like, hey, we need to do a fill in to help the dark stars out, man. <laughs> Okay, here's my question. Uh, we'll uh, we'll already right, you're the expert. Why is Hal taking his good old time crossing the country? <laughs> because he had done it before. I... Oh, nice. <laughs> hard tra- yeah. hard traveling maniac. Yeah. Hard traveling fear monster. <laughs> I uh, I was gonna say to drag it out to get sales up, but oh, that's a good answer. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. See, and I don't even remember what happened after Oa exploded to put him, you know, walking across, you know, middle of nowhere, Texas. Well, wasn't it last like, issue? They just show like a green like comet or something like he- like think, crash the earth and it's him. Uh, yeah, that may have been it. It's, they show the boot. Yeah, I don't think they really give you the behind the scenes of what he did between yeah, Oa exploding and him dropping back down the earth. Well, you know, and... We had the original hard traveling heroes, you know, by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams, you know, yep. seventy six through eighty nine, and then, you know, the beginning of, of this volume of Green Lantern, you know, was you know the road back with how, and I'd forgotten how slow it was <laughs> until we read it again. Ah, uh, true Trad- <laughs> tradition. Yeah, he he does like yeah. to drag it out on the road. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Or, or, yeah, okay, Will, how about you, you can, uh, you know, do, you know, uh, fan cast it in your head and be like, okay, maybe that's how fighting back. He's like trying to slow parallax down or something, or <sighs> he wins in the end. He wins in the end. It's going to take him another, <laughs> it's gonna take him another nine years, but yeah, he'll, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there, man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, again, like we were saying, even, even just like that Quasar issue, it's like a just like a big punch him up for the most part. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Dark Side sending his son test the green this last Green Lantern. Yeah. There's a lot of good roasting of Dark Side's son. Yes, <laughs> I don't even know what species you are. <laughs> yeah, why isn't he gray and stony face like you know his dad? He's mixed. Shh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Like, it's, maybe it skips a generation. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, honestly, I, and I know this is going to sound her- heretic, heretical, but uh, I've never been a fan of the new god stuff. Uh, it's just it, it doesn't work for me. Yeah, no, I, know, feel, I, I feel I feel the same way. I was even I'm even that way, kind of with Eternals too, like the comics mm-hmm. and stuff. So. I mean, and it works for a lot of people, and that's great. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, It's I could I could probably write a dissertation on it, but so I won't. Anyway, it just doesn't work for me. I know, and if it works for you, great, more power to you. But it's it's not for me. Well, that's why I said like I enjoyed Tom King's Mister Miracle because that's like the first time like I really cared Mm -hmm. about any of that like was that fourth world stuff or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, it's not bad. I was just looking up Calabac's history. I was just going to say, I don't know whose mother is. Uh, his mother, Sully, S-U-L-I, was killed by Desaad, acting under orders from Calabac's grandmother, Queen Hegra. Oh, uh, uh, maybe he's adopted. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, Calabac. Oh, no, maybe he. No, maybe he's not. Calabac was often pitted against Orion, and after numerous clashes, they learned that they were half-brothers. Ah. Uh. So maybe it is Dark Side's kid. I don't know. Yeah, because Calabac's always jealous because it seems, you know, even though he works against him, uh, Dark Side clearly uh, favors Orion over Calabac. Orion. Yeah. 
<sighs> Family ch- again. What is this? What is this lifetime? Fathers and sons. What is this, lifetime? <laughs> <sighs> Anyone have any other thoughts on this one? I got nothing, man. <laughs> uh, nah, not really. I, I don't know if we're going to see. Do we see more Calabac in the world after this? I mean, he seems to be very uh, sheepishly dismissed by dear old dad. At the end. <laughs> I, know he shows up, I know he shows up again, but I just can't remember where, because I don't think he shows up in Green Lantern, at least not for a good long while. Does, does- does Dark Side show up again in Green Lantern, or is this just kind of oh well, that drop? Well, remember, um, they is that it's like a new character. Remember, like around seventy five. What is that? Like another like is that like another undis- new son of Dark Side? What is that? Uh, oh, what's his face? Uh, I forget his name, but I, I swear they like introduce a new character, and I don't know if he's like another son of Dark Sides. Oh wow, I I've I've forgotten. I read a lot of these. So what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to look this up so I can. Uh... So you wonder if if uh, Calabac, sorry, <laughs> if he comes Calabac, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh yeah, issue seventy five. It's um yeah. You remember they introduced it was that Graven G R A Y V N. Oh yes, yes, I remember that character. Yes. So then another uh, man at Dark Side. Man, he's really uh populating the uh, galaxy, isn't he? <laughs> Worse than Lots Cra- of new gods. Worse than <laughs> worse than Craven the Hunter, man. Every time you turn around, there's like another Craven son. Uh, oh, did you guys see? Uh, okay, since these uh, issues are so entertaining, did you guys see the new uh, Spider-Man trailer? I have not yet seen it. No. Oh, they had some new stuff. Uh, yeah, it's, again, I can't wait. It looks good. Yeah. When is that coming? When's that coming out? Uh, I think it's the seventeenth. It's like it's like a one week before Christmas. Yeah. Hmm. So that'll probably dominate like the last half of December. I would imagine. <sighs> See how many cameos we get. <laughs> oh, I think they said it's not out on Blu-ray yet, but I think, uh, I don't know if you have to buy it, but I thought I saw something about Venom 2 being on digital already or something. Oh, cool. There was a commercial for it. Let there be carnage. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So any other thoughts on Green Lantern 61? <laughs> I got nothing, man. Matt? <laughs> no, I don't know. I thought I thought it was a fun, fun enough, weird little bubble gum issue. <laughs> I think that's an excellent way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, less filling. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's get to this last one. Uh, let me pull it up here. Dark stars. Get, and what? Let's get to the dark stars feast. That's going to leave us full <laughs> of something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dark Stars, number 30, April 1995, To Wake the Dead. Uh, writer Michael Jan Friedman, penciler Mike Collins, uh, inker Ken Brand, colorist Linda Medley, letter Bob Pinaha, yeah, Copperberg, yeah, so it was the same team as what was on 29. Uh, wait, there's no synopsis for this? I thought this one was a little more interesting than the, uh, last one. Yeah, no synopsis, so. Yeah, no, so it opens yeah. up, there's uh, Cal and Donna are still on Mars, and then Martian Manhunter shows up and be like, why are you having a uh, picnic on, <laughs> on the graveyard you know, of my entire race? <laughs> Oops! <laughs> yeah, John seemed a little uncharacteristically uh, cranky <laughs> in this issue. <laughs> well, maybe if someone was having a picnic on the graves of everyone you ever knew. To, you know, yeah, I, I'd probably be cranky too, yeah. Okay, okay. I was thinking of this when I was reading this. I'm like, does Cal have a thing about taking women to like sites of like mass death because one Mars <laughs> every time we took Alex to that beach we were always like man it's like that seems like it's pretty close to Coast City or what used to be Coast City yeah so does he have a thing about like romantic uh, encounters next to like mass genocide <laughs> I don't know we should we should look into that perhaps <laughs> we'll, we'll keep a running tally as we go through the rest of the series. I was going to say, oh, Ron, oh, uh, Ron Moore, sir. <laughs> Although he didn't write this one. <laughs> I was going to say, it came pretty quick, so I don't think they had time to get mail, but it's like, I could see after that Green Lantern issue, you know, someone being like, hey, aren't they just like having fun on like the, all these dead Martians? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that cover. So yeah, they run into John. He's like, what are you doing here? 
He mentions uh, Wonder Woman in the Justice League, which we'll get to during the Way of the Warrior crossover. <sighs> Guy Gardner, Justice League. Don't and oversell it. D- don't oversell it to us, Phil. Don't oversell it. <laughs> oh, I didn't even read it. Yet. I didn't even read it yet, but I'm just like, oh, boy. It could be 90s goodness. And, but we won't get to that till the beginning of January. So hopefully Coda should be back from Far Sector by then. <laughs> uh, again, we get some Dark Stars leaving. Get more Colin Ferris. And ooh, this suit's more powerful. But it hurts. <laughs> but it's a good hurt. Oh. Uh, and then I guess, yeah, then Martian Manhunter, Donna and Cal see... What are these people? Oh, they're like raising the planet. Yeah, it's the uh, consortium. Is that the bad guys? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Or no, not the consortium. The syndicate. Oh, right. Syndicate. Syndicate. Thank you. Yeah. S- same difference. Yeah. Generic nineties work. And I, sorry, this has one of my pet peeves. Okay. Just, just one. I am bad guy, but dude, you should have done something different. Die, lackey. <laughs> I'm bad guy. I mean, it's <laughs> how many people are going to work for you if you randomly kill them? I mean, this could go back to you know, Joker. Well, yeah, that's what that's always my argument. It's like, why does it? <laughs> I'm like, Joker must have a hell of a dental plan. I mean, people yeah. still work for that guy. I don't yeah. know. Well, I don't, I don't want to get too political, but I was going to say, oh, people worked for Trump. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I guess if the money if the money's good enough, man, people will take. Take that risk, I guess. Mm-hmm. Even if you've got three superheroes coming at you. Mm. But yeah, it seems like they're just like tearing down like all these like Martian, uh, what like buildings and stuff. And John's like, it's all that's mm-hmm. left to my people. But yeah, John wasn't, it, I don't know, he wasn't too impressed with uh, Kyle until he was outside and he catches those, uh, catches some of those syndicate troops in that same cage again. He, uh, <laughs> that he designed, yeah. A couple weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> Michael Jan Friedman doing his homework. He's like, oh, yeah, he designed <laughs> He designed a trap for villains. Hey, I've got villains. Everybody must have read that <laughs> issue. It's like, because didn't he do that in Titans that uh, Marv Wolfman was writing? So everyone must have I read that so, issue. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, he designed the cage. <laughs> it would funny if he would have been like, hey, man, I tweaked the design, man. I can uh, make this even better when I get home. Yeah, I can charge him for uh, redesign. <laughs> I mean, no, don't you think that'd be cool? Like, he can, like, uh, tweak the design in his head as he's like using constructs and stuff be like eh. yeah that was that was one of the things one of the little sequences i really loved about rebirth was uh how hal discusses yeah how everyone you know, uses their ring. parallax how they discuss how each of them use the ring differently yeah. which i thought was really cool oh yeah i, I miss what you know remember john stewart used to be an architect instead of just like yeah. a marine and i think we're getting more of him being Something besides a marine in you know the current series, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, because they're calling back a lot of. I mean, Thorn is Thorn knows his John Stewart history, I think, exceptionally well. So, yeah. I mean, I can see Thorn doing something too, where it's like, yeah, he not only did he shut off like that guardian portion of his brain, he shut off like other portions too. So, mm-hmm. it will bring that architecture back. Mm, but yeah, they defeat the syndicate. Uh, soldiers and they're like uh who are they saying oh we'll send someone to come pick up the uh the bad guys and then since all these dark stores are quitting donna closes the dallas uh office and uh, tells the, uh, her assistant you come with me to the titans headquarters in jersey oh uh, that hive of scum and, <laughs> that hive of scum and villainy new jersey <laughs> oh, dallas Jersey, oh. Dallas, Jersey. <laughs> well, me and Lilith always like teasing because Charlie's from New Jersey. We're uh, anytime we're like now, anytime we say New Jersey, we have to hit the thing. <laughs> it's a high of uh, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. It seems almost seems like they were wrapping up the series because yeah, you're getting all these like familiar dark stars quitting and stuff, and mm-hmm. it's like we really- and you know. Colin gets his upgrade and, you know, you just feel like he's going to do his thing there and come back to the universe and be a special yeah. something, you know. And again, he's not even back in this universe. John Stewart's basically playing administrator. So it's basically the Donna show here. Yeah, pretty much. Which is kind of interesting because it's not, you know, the Donna Troy that 
everybody knew and loved in Titans. I mean, he's a dark star now, which is, it just seems weird. Well, it's always weird, I think, when they like take those Titans away from their friends and stuff. That's like when New 52 started. They put Cyborg on the Justice League, and it's like he was always in the Justice League. It's like, so basically, you stripped so much from that character when you took all those friendships and the Titans away from him. I'm like... <laughs> I mean, I don't care if he's in the league, but don't say he was in the league from day one. Yeah. Wait, that's not continuity anymore, though, is it? I don't think so. Who knows? <laughs> it's like they'll, knows they'll, they never, they'll never admit anymore, and they'll never do a, like a full reboot anymore, but they sl- I think they've slowly been winding that New 52 stuff back quietly. I mean, because Rebirth was the new yeah. whatever. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I've got to catch up on a lot of that reading in Green Lantern, so... But yeah, the last couple of years they've been winding that new fifty two stuff back. Like uh, trying to remember there was some story I think in Batman where they mentioned the earthquake. I'm like, Oh, that happened still? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Continuity. Yeah, I think, I think they're bringing a lot of that stuff back. Oh, they're talking about doing it. I think the rumors are they're gonna be doing another death of Superman. Really? What? Yeah. <laughs> Because his son's out there now. Is it the new Superman? Okay. Well, no. They're killing his son already? No, no, no. Yeah, I think they're going to be killing Clark for a while because the son's out there and like yeah, he's teaming up with Nightwing in February because Tom Taylor writes both of those books. So, uh, hey, it's sold. They're like, hey, what's what's the best thing we ever? What's the what's the thing we printed that sold the best ever? Oh, Death of Superman. Let's do that again. Do it again. <laughs> Although no one's going to fall for it this time. Yeah, and you know, I don't think it's going to be another slow news day. It, it was a perfect storm. <laughs> oh, I said I remember 1992. I remember exactly when they. It was on. I remember watching that on the news. The, like the lines out the wrapped around comic book stores. Mothers on TV. Why are they killing Superman? My baby loves Superman. <laughs> I think even then I was like, he's coming back. Yeah, I mean. Of course he is. <laughs> well, that's like in 19, 1988, like they when they killed off Jason Todd, you know, and like mm-hmm. half, you know, a lot of the public who never read a comic book thought they had killed off Dick Grayson. It's like, <laughs> how could they kill Robin? Because it's not the Robin you know. Because <laughs> it's not little punk. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one that sold the hubcaps. And it was the year before that Batmobile. And it, was, <laughs> and it was that year before that Michael Keaton Batman. So they're like, "Hey, he's a loner in the movie. We'll make him a loner in the comics for like a year." <laughs> Although, I mean, ultimately that did give us Tim Drake yeah. and you know, a lonely place of dying, which yeah. was a really good little oh, you know, yeah. Batman crossover, and the Robin series where he gets trained and. Oh yeah, they they spun mini series and an ongoing out of that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did indeed. And we got him back. We got Jason Todd back as the Red Hood, right? Oh, so. oh that's like we were talking about all those 90s books and little. It's like, how did they ever get like an Azrael series, you know, especially like 100 issues? I'm like, you know how they pitched it? It's probably like, hey, it's another book for when we do big bat crossovers. <laughs> another chapter in a bat, in a crossover. <laughs> and Denny O'Neill wrote every issue, so it's like, you yeah. know, he pushed that through. <sighs> Well, you know, in that original Azrael series, you know, has art by Joe Casada. I mean, it's yeah, I remember that too. They were just, I remember that before Nightfall. They're like, "Hey, this character is going to be important. You better buy this. We can't tell you why this character is going to be important, but you better buy this <laughs> mini series." See oh, how, my back. Sorry. <laughs> oh my back. See how interesting Dark Stars is, kids. We're talking anything else. We're talking say. about '90s Batman now. <laughs> well, hey, we got hey, we got to keep our uh, fan base happy, okay? I love That's Batman. Right. That's right. <laughs> and I, of course, love Hal Jordan. <laughs> oh, true. I, of course, love Hal Jordan. I love Batman. It's those fanboys. Exciting times to be a pimp. <laughs> <sighs> so what did you think of this issue, Matt? Yes, Mr. Kona, what did you think of 30? Oh, um, well, I was glad that... Uh... Green Lantern was in this one. I mean, I liked it better than 29. Made it a little more exciting, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, and I read it in the right order, I guess. I mean, I read the Green Lantern one before I read Dark (laughs) Stars 29, which didn't really matter that much to me. And then uh, Dark Stars 30, which just kind of picks up at the end of I was hoping to get more... uh, I don't know why. I, I would expect... Hal to be in this one, but you know, you could cliffhanger at the end of the Green Lantern one. 
yeah, seriously, if they wanted to bump sales on this book, why didn't they have ha- show how like walking across, I don't know, Arkansas or something? Yeah. <laughs> Started in Texas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's oddly specific. <laughs> hey, he's making his way east, man, because even before he That's gets right. the cow, I think uh, one of the next issues of Guy Gardner is sitting in the bar. <laughs> yeah. And I did like the uh, spaceships and I think what is clearly uh, – USS Enterprise looking <laughs> in the middle of there. And there was a droid uh, Russian man. That's like, that's like those, uh, or some of those early issues of X Men when they introduced the Shi'ar. Like, I think that, like a lot of their spaceships and like the crew, the bridge and stuff, they, they kind of like, he ripped off a lot of Star Trek. It's just uh, like a lot of Kirk mm-hmm. stuff, just with the big hair. It's, or it's just, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you set the bar so high, and that's what people associate uh, space travel with, or even like weaponry. You know, that's what la- all laser guns look like. You can't have different looking phasers. And mm-hmm. well, you, there was uh, there's a couple of X Men Star Trek crossovers back in the '90s, weren't there? I think yes, there were. I didn't. I never read them, but yes, there were. Yeah. I think I think that there was even like a novelization or something. Uh, I, yes. I remember that you know Dr. McCoy spoke to Dr. McCoy, which I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jim! I'm a doctor, not a mutant. <laughs> no, I am a mutant. Wait, which McCoy am I? <laughs> but I think uh, Bark Sylvester may have done the art on one of them. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and look for those because it's been a long time since I've. I looked through those things. Yeah, I'd like to read them. I remember seeing the ads in a bunch of the comics at the time, but yeah, never got a chance to read them. <sighs> All right. So, <laughs> any other thoughts on these? Um, it, it is what it is. <laughs> they they are they decidedly are. what what they are. <laughs> they happened. 1995 happened. 1995 totally happened. <laughs> I I was there. I remember it. <laughs> So what's wor- what's worse, do you will? Anything that happened in the Dark Stars, or just that page or two of how Jordan walking across Texas? Uh, I mean, the Dark Stars is both issues are competently done. Yeah. The art's fine, the story's fine. It's a, the the story's denser than it is in this issue of Green Lantern. Yeah, it's just that there's nothing that's. I mean, it, it's just okay. Yeah. You know, it's not. Great! I need to, you know, what happens next? You know, I need to, I need to read this. It's just it, it almost, you know, it almost seems like Dark Stars are trying to do what they did in Green Lantern, but instead of like, you know, just blowing everything up and starting with one guy, it seems like they're like, okay, this guy's quitting, this woman's quitting, this, you know, yeah. this, this, Colin Ferris, everyone thinks he's dead, but so until they're basically getting down to Donna. Yeah, but then you know Donna's going to get taken away as a Dark Star pretty soon because of a Titans reboot, so. And then Dark Stars itself is canceled, you know, at, in eight issues after this. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see how they shut that down. Yeah. Although I'm trying to remember when her and well, and John Stewart shows up in the, the Green Lantern book in like the early, early mid '70s, aren't they just like, oh yeah, we're all kind of our own free agents now or something? Or yeah, I can't remember. Well, we'll have to. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll have to re- reread those, which are on the schedule. Yeah, that's right. Coming soon. <laughs> All right. Anything else, boys? I'll miss you guys when I'm off in space. But, uh, Take a battery. Some transmissions. I will. <laughs> Be careful out there, man. Don't let your ring run out of charge. That's right. <laughs> it's kind of out of date, but yeah, watch out for those yellow lamps. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And safes. Oh, yeah. Safes. Don't, get, don't get stuck in a safe, man. <laughs> All right, so for next week, me and William will be here. Maybe Kona will beam us a transmission from the far sector. But uh, next week, we'll be covering Guy Gardner, 29 and 30, and Action Comics, 709. Guy comes to Metropolis. An out-of-control guy. And we get business in the front, party in the back, Superman. Oh, yeah, mullet Superman. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 1995. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a strong yeah. mullet. Yes, I think he should. Oh, he and well, Green. Oh, uh, Guy Gardner 29 is like when he opens the bar. So there's like a ton of like uh, guest stars and cameos. I think Superman's there too. So 
Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get I think so. One soon. And oh, 29 so- is a beautiful book. I think Phil Jimenez yeah. does the art. It's just an awesome book. I remember buying that and going, this is awesome. You know? <laughs> yeah, because I think Jimenez is like in that like group with like uh, George Perez, who like are good at drawing those big group scenes and stuff. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah, because I mean, f- freaking George Perez, man, he drew what every all 12 issues of Crisis on Infinite Earths, where like every DC character at the time <laughs> appeared somewhere yep. in those 12 issues. And then, uh, you know, in the, what, mid-90s, he was doing Avengers with Kurt Busiek. Yes. I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of Hawkeye. Yep. <laughs> until, we left the, until we left the lead, the uh, Thunderbolts. Yep. All right. Which was a great series, too. Oh, yeah. Love Thunderbolts. That original Thunderbolts? Yeah. Good Maybe stuff. we'll get that in the movies, too, someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yes, kids, send your thoughts on... Uh, Yes, the, the mullets. Uh, yeah, it's all coming down next week. So email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow Sector2814 on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, go join the Book of Oa, our Facebook fan group. Uh, find links to all the social medias for all the shows we do. Uh, find links to this YouTube channel. Yes, no, that is not Chris Hemsworth. That is Matt Kona. So you can prove it for yourself on the YouTube. Or most importantly, uh, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Once again, the Guardians are dead. We're doing this ourselves. So, uh, again, as little as a dollar helps us out. Uh, but you get original content, creator interviews. Uh, Lilith and I talk to Mr. DG Chichester every month, and then next year we're doing superhero movie brackets, trying to find the worst superhero movie ever. Uh, so yeah, so find that or merchandise. Uh, get yourself some Capes and Lunatics or Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks merch uh, at the store. Get everything I just mentioned all in one place. That's Linktree l a n k t r dot e e slash Capes and Lunatics. All right, Matt Kona, throw out your social media because I believe you can still check social media in the far sector. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> At Matt Kona, um, you'll see pictures of me in a very strange land beyond Oa. And uh, it's on Twitter and Instagram, M-A-T-T-K-O-N-A. Anything you want to say before you leave? Suck it, uh, Lilith. <laughs> so man, yeah, this is gonna for a little for a few weeks here. This is gonna be uh See you later, bunkies. <laughs> all right. Will Allred, master of the core, master of the quantum zone, master of the creator own comics, and huge lover of Hal Jordan. Where can people find you? I of course love Hal Jordan. That's right. Um you can find me at Walred, that's at Gmail and Twitter and Facebook and probably Instagram, which I never update and need to, but I haven't done it. So uh, you can also find uh Crossover Division. First two issues are out at crossoverdivision.com. And you can find uh Diary of Night at diaryofnight.com. Uh and uh if you like Green Lantern, you probably because you have excellent taste like Quasar, uh, you can check out all kinds of cool stuff about Quasar at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. Hey, you boys, you look at the party? I love the party. I'll put it in my navel. <sighs> Still no Quasar figure. Damn it. <laughs> at least not in this Dang country. It. At least not in this country. <laughs> all right. So, again, come back next week. Guy Gardner, 2930, and Action Comics, 709. Once again, I believe the action conference comes between 29 and 30, so. Nice. Yeah. Gotta another, keep us on our toes. Another crossover thing here. <laughs> Boy, I wonder who's trying to boost two sales there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know, man. You got me. Mullet is strong. <laughs> the 95 mullet is strong. <laughs> All right, join us next time. Everyone, keep in touch, including you, Matt Kona. And remember, I will. And remember, watch out for those picnics. <laughs>
But we have also decided to read Superman comics, uh, read Superman books, watch Superman shows, cartoons, movies, basically everything Superman, and from an Australian perspective as well. Whether you're a seasoned fan, like me, or whether you are coming in fresh, wide-eyed, and wanting to learn more like me, then this podcast is for you. Join us for our bi-weekly adventures available on all good podcast catches. So just search for Last Sons of Krypton, a Superman podcast. We'll be coming to you from Australia or some cosmic dimension, wherever we are that week. Up, 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 up and, and away! away.